So I was watching a video from a fellow colored pencil artist when they did something that had me saying out loud, no, because what they did can actually completely wreck your drawing. And so I decided to make this video to talk about some things that you shouldn't do with your colored pencil drawings, because you don't want your drawings that you spent hours on ruined or to make things really hard for yourself, do you? I didn't think so. Why would you want to ruin the surface of your drawing paper, making it difficult to draw layers, or even some cases not able to draw hardly any at all? So be sure that you don't draw on wet paper that you've blended with solvent. I know to some out there, this may not seem like a big issue, but for me as a professional artist, it is. When paper gets wet, it is very easy to permanently damage it, either by making impressions, ripping, or tearing. And the thinner the paper you are using, the easier it is to have those things happen. When you draw on wet paper, firstly, it won't take the layers very well. You're going to have to work a little harder to get that area to take the colored pencils. And then it presses the surface down and damages the tooth, making it more difficult to add layers on top of later. Layers are important with colored pencils and doing something that is going to damage the tooth of my paper is is not something I want to do. So adding layers of colored pencil to an area that you just blended with solvent is not something that I would recommend at all for your drawings. And especially if you're using a paper that is 80 pounds or less because you are more likely to have your paper tear. This is 80 pound tone tan Strathmore paper. I'm going to add some solvent and then I'm taking an embossing tool which simulates what a colored pencil would do. And of course this is a rounded tip so it's not as sharp as some colored pencils would be. When you do a color colored pencil instead of using an embossing tool, you're getting the same kind of damage with your work. It's just that it's covered with colored pencils, so you may not be able to see it as well. As I'm drawing over the top of this wet paper, you can see that the indentations are pretty strong. And I'm not pressing hard either. I'm actually using the weight of the pencil, totally destroying the surface. And now when I press really hard, like I would when I'm trying to draw some first strokes, it actually really damages the paper. So guys, if you are drawing over the top of areas that you are using solvent, just don't, it's not good for your drawings. When you blend an area with solvent, it only takes 10 to 15 minutes to dry. That's not very long to wait. You can work on another area for 10 to 15 minutes while that's drying, and then you're not losing any of your draw time. Another thing you don't want to use with your colored pencil drawings is hairspray. I don't know who I heard this from before, but somebody a long time ago suggested to me to use hairspray to spray my drawings with as a fixative. And yes, technically you can do that. However, there are a number of reasons why you shouldn't. Number one is that, have you looked at the ingredients list of a lot of those hairsprays out there? There are a lot of hair care types of products in them that you don't want on your artwork. They aren't archival. And personally, if you ask me, I don't want a bunch of silicones on my artwork which is what's in hairspray. Even if you buy the kind that doesn't have fragrance, it's still not something I'm going to want to use on my artwork. The biggest reason is because it's sticky. I've actually test sprayed some hairspray on some printer paper just to see what would happen, and I did this years ago, but the end result was that it was sticky. Hairspray is just not meant for artwork. Most sprays that are created for preserving drawings or artwork have ingredients in them that are good for the longevity of artwork and they're definitely not gonna make them sticky. Those fixative sprays actually don't cost a whole lot more than a large can of hairspray. The kind of fixative that I use really only costs about $7. Using a craft knife poorly or too much can actually damage your drawing. There's a right way and a wrong way to using Ace Life's craft knife. You could also use an X-Acto knife, but those are a little more difficult to use. A sliced craft knife is better suited for colored pencils because of the curved edge. This makes scraping off that top layer super easy. But if you use it the wrong way, like as if you were cutting into the paper, well, it's going to do exactly that. It's going to cut into the paper, so don't do that. But there is another thing that can go wrong when using this craft slice knife, and that is by scraping off too much. I've actually done this myself a couple of times. The more pressure you apply when you scrape off that top layer, the more it will scrape off. Oftentimes you scrape off in a more gentle approach and you can get a lighter version of what you would reveal if you scraped a little harder to remove most of that top layer. So of course, if you press too hard, you can remove too much, but there is also the factor of making repeated passes of scraping off that top layer. So there's been a couple of times when I scraped off a top layer, went over to work 
on another area of a drawing and then came back to do some more scraping and I scraped over an area where I had already previously scraped and it scraped the actual paper off. And of course I was shocked, but it at least wasn't too bad of damage. The downside to this is that when it happens, depending on how hard you were pressing to scrape, or maybe you had it at a slightly different angle than just a straight up and down, it can actually remove quite a bit of that top layer of paper. And in one case it did this to one of my drawings and I had a flap of paper hanging up in the air. <laughs> and I was like, oh great, well, what do I do with this? So I actually just very, very gently pulled off that flap of paper and removed it. And I did it in a, I slightly turned the paper, like I twisted it to remove it. So that way it didn't like spread anywhere else, but it remained in that same area and it came off. And then I just drew over the top of that. And because I was doing a heavier layered drawing, you wouldn't even notice. And actually, I don't even remember which drawing this was on. There also was another time that this happened when it was a much smaller amount that kind of came off the paper and I just drew over the top of it and it laid down pretty nice. It didn't cause any issues like that other time where it was a much larger piece of flap. To prevent this from happening with any more of my drawings, I'm very careful with the scraping that I do. I don't do a whole lot of passes with doing those scrape layers and I certainly don't press very hard. And now that that has happened, I of course pay more attention to the areas that I know I've scraped so that I don't run into having this problem again. Because damaging that paper and having that roughed up surface from all of the damage that's been done, if I was drawing a drawing that didn't have a whole lot of layers or this was an area that was lighter in color and didn't have a lot of heavier dark colored layers on top of it, you would definitely notice that that paper was ruined. So this is something to just be mindful of when you're using a slice craft knife, that you are being gentle and you don't do too many passes on your drawings. The slice craft knife is quite handy to use for colored pencil drawing. Check out this video here to see how I use it to draw fur and hair. And if you're looking to level up your drawing skills with colored pencils, then check out my real-time tutorials on Patreon. There's a link right here on the screen. You will learn all kinds of drawing tips and techniques with colored pencil, graphite, and soft pastel. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.